Hello guys, so I am back again today. We're going to finish up where we left off yesterday. Just a little update. So yesterday, after I finished laying, you know, the gel thickness on my poor little nails, um, I ended up having another lupus flare-up reaction to light, and that sent me to bed yesterday. I did, before I fell asleep, I managed to put a thicker layer of the Glitter Bells gel actually just kind of on top here um, with it's still really too thin for what I need it for so we're gonna fix that today but I just threw that on um, so that way to kind of get me through the night and I'm actually having another flare-up again today unfortunately but we're gonna finish this up so let me go in with my young nails and I have not actually buffed or filed the nails that I'm wearing right now but I'm just gonna throw on Young Nails here, the Protein Bond, right on top. And then we're gonna go in with our Madame Glam Base Coat Gel. And then on top of that, we're gonna start using our uh, Young Nails Synergy Gel <laughs> in clear pink. All right. Can you tell that the Benadryl is kind of kicking in and wearing on me? today was to thicken up my gel using the Young Nail Synergy Gel. Put on my base coat which is going to be the Glitter Bells and a hollow Glitter Bells top coat which is fabulous. I need to buy some more of their top coats. And then I had a really fun tutorial plan for artwork but um, because I am having another lupus flare-up I'm kind of changing things. We'll do the nail art tutorial tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, look for that video tomorrow. Today is just going to be thickening these up and, um, and doing the Glitter Bells application, which I love. That's one of my favorite, um, it's one of my favorite looks. It's, it, it's just very, very natural. In this one, I use the apple pie, which is, it's a little bit darker than the usual cookie cream that I believe I've done tutorials on. Uh, but I love them all. It's such a super easy little nail job to do. Anybody can do it. And it takes like five minutes max to do that part. I'm just gonna go down the nail, down the very center, add a line, and then smooth it out across the surface. And then I'll file after I do this part. And I do apologize if I sound really a little like I'm enthusiastic. I'm really not, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so, so, so tired of having these reactions. Ugh, I break out in like hives and I get extremely itchy. And then I have to take a ton of Benadryl to kind of get things to calm down. And then I feel like a zombie all, well, for more than a day, honestly. <laughs> but lately, you know, it's been taking the large most, the large most, the large amount of Benadryl each day and it has just so caught up to me i'm sure eventually here i'll get this lupus flare-up under control and then you won't have to sit and listen to me beach and complain too much so this is going to be a very very short video today but tomorrow's will be longer so that'll be good hopefully tomorrow i won't have any reactions i'm praying I did want to tell you so I wanted to do a shout out today and a little bit of a story time and um, yeah I figured I'd go ahead and squeeze that in here so I don't know if you guys know Grace Helbig um, she is a comedian a youtuber um, 
I don't know what else. She's an actor. Or she's several, several things that she does. <laughs> That's not all she does. But um, anyway, she has been on YouTube forever. She's hilarious. Uh, I absolutely love watching her. And uh, she recently became diagnosed with breast cancer. And I was so, so sad to hear about that. And um, she is vlogging, of course, her journey. And she has already learned to find the funny in it, which is a great way to go. That's how I ended up um, dealing with my illness and issues that come along with that, um, such as like brain fog, of course, is just huge. You become a complete idiot. You're going to be probably, you're going to feel like you're the most stupid person on the face of the earth. You're going to be totally aware of it. And people are going to look at you crazy. Um, and you're even going to like look at yourself crazy. <laughs> um, but it's just something that happens. And even now, you know, mine comes and goes depending on if I'm in a flare up or not. But I remember back when, um, when I first got diagnosed, which was like in 2011, and then in 2012, uh, I was on like 52 pills a day uh, when things were really, really bad. And during that time, they had also started me on chemotherapy because I was just not improving. And, and um, honestly, all the medicine just kind of made things a lot worse. It seemed like everything everything that they threw on me, um, just, you know, kicked it up that much more. And, um, my body just did not like that, sh that shazazz. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a something else. And, uh, anyway, the chemotherapy was a bunch of baloney. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't work. That's not what I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. It just is a mess. You know, anytime that you get that bad, where you gotta go on something that's scary. You know, shit's bad. And it was just a mess. I mean I all the all the negative side effects that come along with chemotherapy I definitely had. Which yeah, it didn't do me any good. But that's not to say though it I'm sure it does, you know, wonders for tons of people. That's why, you know, doctors lean on that. I'm sure it works magic for, for tons of people. And I'm not saying that I would never, you know, get on it again. It's just I would really have to think hard about it before I did. Because um, that, I don't know, I definitely lost some brain cells during that little, those little shenanigans. Along with becoming a complete airhead, unfortunately, you usually also lose some of your motor skills <laughs> and um and your balance definitely goes out the window and mine never did come back after that before that I was so balanced <laughs> it was like I never fell but after that time oh my gosh I'm I'm a walking hazard your normal ability to like speak normally, <laughs> to spell like you have been spelling all your whole life, you know, simple math mathematics or um, your vocabulary is really going to suffer. I can tell you that right now. But throughout all the horrible things, I know I really dove into like the different groups on Facebook for support. I found great groups with really fabulous people that um, were just as funny and and kind of looked at things, you know, have the same kind of problems and we would all tell stories of, you know, what, we, what was going on and crazy stories, of course. Um, but we'd laugh, you know, with each other and that really, really made things a lot more bearable during that process. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually checked in with those Facebook groups. I need to probably peek back in over there and and say hi to everybody and tell them I'm over here on YouTube. I'm sure they would love to watch. They were always so, so supportive and they had a lot of fun chit-chatting. 
and the insomnia as well, insomnia. I still have insomnia. That's one reason why I still have insomnia so bad even now. But um, I've grown to like sleeping for a couple hours and then getting up for a couple hours, sleeping for a couple hours, getting up for a couple hours, especially during the nighttime because you do kind of feel like a bit of a vampire and and the world seems so much more quiet and uh, you just tend to think a little bit better and whatnot. Losing stuff. Not just do you lose your place in your own conversation that you're having and like you you lose track of where you are in the sentence that you're that you're trying to spit out uh, and I still have that problem now but um, not only do you lose that but you're gonna lose everything else and you're not gonna know where the heck it was because you just had it but I would say a tip for that is you're gonna want to check the refrigerator even if it's clothes you're looking for you're gonna want to check the dishwasher even if it's your drink or <laughs> the food you were eating that you're looking for. Um, goodness, where else did I put weird things? Microwave. Hopefully you don't turn on the microwave um, when you put something weird in there. I think I only did that one time. And it was something that had foil on it, so it wasn't like that. I mean, I could have made that mistake had I just not have been thinking right on a good day. But I do want to say, you know, Grace is approaching it with like, she's finding the funny in things, learning to laugh about herself, laugh about the craziness of the whole trip. Um, you do have to do that. Find the funny in things, laugh at yourself. Try to, like she's vlogging, which I think is great. I definitely should have kept a journal or something during that time. I was just too damn tired though to do it. But um, but video, I never thought about doing video. That would have been a really, really good idea. So for Grace, who is going for through her chemotherapy, and for anyone else who is going through medical issues, I just want you to know I completely understand, and I'm sorry that you're going through that. If you ever need anybody to talk to, just reach out. I would be glad to chit chat with you if you can't sleep at night and you need someone to, you know, either talk with or cry with <laughs> or whatever, um, I'm here for you or laugh with. Laugh definitely. I'm, up, I'm always up for a good laugh. But I just wanted to say that. Let I just wanted to let Grace know that I am supporting her through her journey. I'll be following along and I know she's going to kick cancer's butt and uh, that I have no doubt. She's got the right attitude about it. She's, she is, has jumped on it quickly and, and she's taking care of it. And one day this will all be behind her. That is the best part about it. I wish that in my personal disease, I wish that 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 was an option for me um it's not unfortunately i guess there is the possibility of going into remission with lupus and the symptoms but really though even because i did go into remission for like a minute um well actually well, it, it was a good it was a good little run um however you know those things that that i lost such as like my balance and my my ability to to speak normally and my vocabulary and my brain cells and um being skinny because man those steroids like i said they just totally blew me up and i was skinny mini before that so now i'm still like you know on this journey of trying to get back to being skinny again or not even skinny again I, I totally would just take just being like a little overweight <laughs> a little chubby a little chunky I'm fine with that oh something else that just came to me you're gonna lose your car no matter where you go no matter how long you've you're gonna run into the grocery store or run into work or run in here or there god forbid you be at a mall or like a stadium or something I tell you one thing that came in really really handy was that alarm system on your keychain I used that thing every day 
several times a day. <laughs> that was so, such a, I mean, I know it's not really meant to be used for that purpose, but I would pull up like at wherever I was gonna go in. I'd sit in the car for a minute and I'd tell myself, okay, this is where I am, part. Don't forget it or whatever, you know. And I'd go inside, do whatever I had to do, and I'll be damned if I didn't come out and immediately was like, where did I park? You know, where is my car? <laughs> and then I would just like click my beeper and walk around in the parking lot until, you know, I heard the car alarm go off. Something I did do for myself back during those days, uh, and it's something that luckily, as I was kind of going through the diagnosis process, um, there was a nurse I met during one of the radiology scans or whatever. There was this nurse I met and um, his mother had just become sick and he was caring for. And he had told me, he gave me a little bit of advice and I was so thankful for it. Even now, because there's a lot of details that I don't remember about back then um, during the diagnosis period and, and the really, really hard times. Um, he had told me to put together like a little booklet with um, like type out all your doctor's names, their specialty field, their addresses on this form, you know, you could make, now you could make an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. Back then, well, I'm, I'm sure I had Excel. I don't know what, anyway, I, did, I chose to do Word because that was the big thing back then. But you could write it out too. Get yourself a little journal book or whatever. But, um, so write your doctor's names, their field, their specialty field, um, their addresses, their phone numbers, the pharmacies that you use. You'll want to keep like an ongoing running list of the medis the medications you're on, the milligrams, which doctor put you on it, why they put you on it, um, any negative side effects that you're having from those particular medications as well an excel spreadsheet would, would be fabulous um let's see uh any kind of negative side effects that you're having from them and you'll also want to write on there if the doctor discontinued you from that medication and why they just discontinued you from that medication because that that little those little columns there i did forget to add to my little thing and i should have because like even now when my doctor mentions you know, wanting to try me on this drug again, and he'll say, you know, why did we stop doing that, and and what was going on, or whatever, and I have no idea, and I didn't also keep track, put, put down the day that you start the medication, and if there's a date for when you stop the medication, you want to put that down too, so that way you can say, you know, if they ask you about it again later, you know, okay, I tried this medication for three months, I had these bad side effects, and you took me off of it on this date, you know, whatever. Because they're not going to keep track of it in their notes. That's another thing. Do not count on the doctors and specialists to have the information from your visits and your medical information. Especially, don't expect them to get it correct. When you go into your doctor's appointments, I would and I did do this back then too when I started to do it um, and it helps so, so much take your phone in record everything and I would say record everything so that way you can get home and journal about it later and write everything down because I remember I started doing that and I remember times when the doctors whenever I did get them to like write out um, or print out my records let's say if I was changing doctors going to a new specialist um, whenever I got their records and I read back through them they had so many things completely wrong and that was real frustrating for me because you know you're paying these doctors a lot of money you're putting your life in their hands and sometimes it just kind of feels like the very least they could do is get right you know what's going on with you medically your personal story with with whatever you guys discuss in that room for you know the 30 minutes that you're in there or whatever um, that just was so 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 annoying 
to write all that down. Um, let's see, what else did what I say? Um, also, any kind of tests that you run, write down all that information because again, do not expect the doctors to have all that information in there because there have been tests that I ran that I paid and have bills for that are not listed in my doctor's note and they do not recall sending me over to have those tests. So, be your own advocate. If you can get anybody to go to the appointments and whatnot with you, um, just as a backup voice, because when it comes down to your word against their word, you're going to sound like the crazy one. Okay? So, take somebody with you on those. And if I think of anything else, I'll definitely kind of peep in here and let you guys know. I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And, uh, yeah, if you guys ever need support from me, just let me know. And as far as the nails, I'm just wrapping up here, applying my cuticle oil. Oh, wait, I did think of something that was important. Um, be sure on your little booklet thing in the very, very front, I want you to write down your emergency contact information like anybody that, that you want to be your emergency contact. And I would even on some sticky notes in the front of your little booklet, I would put down your emergency contact information. And um, if you're you know, gonna be traveling or whatever, try to stick that in your purse, try to stick one of those post notes in your purse. Um, I mean, you could always get one of those medical bracelets. I just never got around to doing that. Certainly, certainly that would be the better way to go. And although this little video has ended, I just want to say thank you for watching and listening to my little stories. And I hope that this information helps some of you out there if, um, if you're ever facing this or if you are facing anything like this. Um, yeah, best of luck to you, Grace Helbig, and I will be rooting for you.